Sailing through space. Drifting toward eternity. Mystical sparks encircled by loneliness and cold darkness. Are you afraid? So are a lot of other people. One of the reasons witchcraft has survived through the ages is because man's need to coerce destiny and subdue the fear within has never subsided. Witchcraft attempts to deceive, cajole, and otherwise disturb natural inclination and occurrences. Witches know about the universal energy of which all things are part. You, the stars, the trees, the rocks, the gods. We know how to tune into this energy and to use it. A witch is a psychic female who with magical secrets and sheer force of will makes things happen. I'm a witch. My mother is a witch. My grandmother is a witch. And my grandmother's great-grandmother was a witch. I'm a sixth generation witch. With magic, I control energy. With magic, I can help you become a power. With enchantments, spells, and charms, you will soon be able to rearrange the law and order of all things. Long ago, herbs and fire were used to influence the gods. The pungent aromas were meant to stimulate the senses of the deity. And when the deity was aroused, the deity was compassionate. If you would like special favors from the gods, honor them. The gods will protect their own. I know a god who controls all physical power. With his help, you will be able to generate the impulses needed to attract a multitude of lovers. His name is Jupiter. He is the god of creativity. Raw creativity. If you acknowledge him by lighting candles in his name, he will reward you with great seductive energy. Your love affairs will be brilliant, vibrant, bold. If you want to be a successful enchanter, you must be able to generate dynamic magnetic impulses at will and project easily emotional force with tremendous intensity. In order to obtain your desires, you must discipline your subconscious, leash the powerful forces of your emotions, and when you do, you'll free your spirit. Before you will ever be able to influence your environment, you must take command of yourself. Only then will you be able to exert a never-ending control over others. A bridge to your inner core is the self-fascination ritual. This ritual is a traditional part of witchcraft and must be performed regularly Tuesdays and Fridays for three months, once each year. It never fails. To begin, bathe in warm water, Fragrant with passion flowers. Softly dry your body with a linen cloth that has been heavily scented with sandalwood perfume. In front of a mirror in a semi-darkened room, stand naked inside a circle of ground-dry seahorse. Light a coral candle. Now, Raise your arms high over your head and slowly and rhythmically sway from side to side. Repeat. 
repeat your name 99 times while continuing to sway. Stop swaying and quickly clench your fists. Stiffen all your muscles and chant three times. I control. I am the power. I control. I am the power. I control. I am the power. Throw out the candle. Isis is the ancient goddess of the moon. When you have lost everything and fallen into brooding melancholia, her magic will charm you once again to even greater heights. All enchanters who perform rituals in the name of Isis are granted special favors. She is the queen of witchcraft. She has great sympathy for lovers. When you call her name, she never turns away. If you want to work at seductive sorcery, you must never attempt a ritual, cast a spell, work a charm, enchant or fascinate without the protection of a full moon ring that has been made powerful by Isis. The stone or gem that offers the most strength is the one associated with your birth sign. Your moon sign stone is also highly effective. You begin in the afternoon on the day of the new moon. Fill with earth a copper bowl and place the bowl in a square red silk in the center of a table. At 9 p.m., boil water in a cauldron or saucepan. Cook your ring in the boiling water for nine full minutes. And while the ring cools, place nine white candles all around the copper bowl. Light the candles. Let them blaze. They will instantly act as agents and purify the earth that is inside the copper bowl. And when the earth is purified and the ring is cooked, bury it deep inside the bowl. Now, let the candles flame brightly for 90 minutes. And then sprinkle three drops of olive oil all over the copper bowl. And three times, chant. In the name of Isis, goddess of the moon, I offer my energies as a gift to the cosmos. My soul now belongs to the wind. I am the cosmos. I am the wind. The ring must remain buried until midnight and the night of the full moon. When the moon is full, remove the ring from the copper bowl and place it on your finger. Bury the bowl, the earth, the candles, and the red silk in a garden. Now you're ready for sorcery and seduction. And for the rest of your life, your Isis full moon ring will surround you with magic vibrations that will draw susceptible sensual partners into your orbit. Wear your ring at all times. You'd be a fool to cast a spell without it. Demons create a fantastic energy and are by nature ferocious. And when you cast a spell, you must know you will attract them. If demons are allowed freedom for venting the madness, they can be diabolical. They are the reasons behind haunted houses, howling storms, 
Lost keys, droopy hair, nagging associates, and cool lovers. If you're strong, maybe you can ignore demons. But why not invite them into a magic circle? Your magic circle. Control their energies. Use them to see into your future beyond tomorrow. Throw a handful of rosebuds high into the air and let them fall and scatter where they will. Demons will gather. Their ranting and raving will create wild, exciting vibrations. While they will stare into the center of the circle. As you softly whisper the name of their demon king, he will come and answer any three questions about your future. As soon as he has spoken, perform a spell. Of course, the energy within the magic circle must be dissipated. What will escape and create havoc in your life? When the magic is done, destroy the circle. To make a magic circle, draw a three foot wide chalk circle and cover it with a fine wheat flour. Then place three black beans in the center and cover them with cloves, salt, and basil. Three red candles should be flaming at the top part of the magic area. Now scatter the rosebuds. The demons will gather. Keep brave. They are helpless. Now will be the time for you to see into your future. Stare into the center of the circle, and as they will, softly whisper the name of their demon king. Softly. Sakra Elmerid. Demon energy is best used to stimulate clandestine relationships. Orgies are ritualistic energy exchanges that provide the concentration of power needed for spellcasting. Witches and wizards crave energy, and in fact are very much addicted to it in all forms. And there's a special kind of energy derived from uniting with another. And so spellcasters do a tremendous amount of uniting. We know that a mystical bond exists between lovemakers. This bond is able to attract all sorts of good luck and success. An energy exchange celebration that is offered as a token to the gods will liberate your soul and expand your consciousness. You will be better able to absorb the raw energy of the cosmos and convert it quickly to your needs after you have participated in a glorious celebration of love. Enchanters need orgies. The orgy will help you generate the electric and magnetic impulses you'll need in order to cast spells. But the best time for an orgy is during the dark of the moon, or when the moon is full and again at the times of the equinoxes. These are periods when the earth is surrounded by wild vibrations, and when if the orgy is successful, you will be able to slip easily into the fifth dimension of fantasy gather what you need and return stronger and ready to create your destiny. Traditional orgies have always consisted of either 9, 11, 13, or 22 guests. You are able to double the amount, triple it, increase it seven times over. But you must never invite one more or one less. There's a reason for the strict discipline in witchcraft. And if you deviate from the rule, you could unleash powerful and unfortunate evil forces. So plan your orgy with care. Invite only a specified number of guests. To begin the orgy, all guests must stand in a circle. Each must light a red candle and dedicate the flame to the god Pluto. And then let the place be filled with laughter. And as the queen witch rings a pewter bell three times, Psychic inspiration will direct the group activities. As an enchanter, you are committed to each spell cast. You can't turn back. Part time witchcraft is impossible. It will become your lifetime involvement. With spells, you'll generate vibrant forces and attract various energies, not all compatible with your nature. And you will need spiritual protection. 
Magic flowers exert subtle influences that balance your psyche. If you're wise, you'll cultivate the one that's best for you. When dried and worn and packed as an amulet, your sun sign flower will ensure peace and bring love and understanding into your life. Enchanted flowers are wild. You will find them scattered through the woods, rambling along the riverbanks, high on hills, hidden in shadowy places, nested in valleys, and blooming in the sun, waiting. Each sun sign has a flower suited to its special emotional needs and temperament. If you're Aries, and you need emotional love in order to survive, pink shooting stars are for you. Taurus, hungry for physical unity, will be satisfied when violet wood sorrows come to the rescue. Gemini, you will experience painful disloyalties without help from the lavender fillories. Cancer's temptatious love affairs will be protected with blossoms of the white spring beauty. Your majestic ego, Leo, is matched by spirited lovers with the golden thistle. Virgo, your need for romantic freedom is guaranteed by the wild blue vervain. Libra, with the power of the Venus looking glass, you will find sensitive sweet love. Passionate lovers are offered to you, Scorpio, when you wear the regal scarlet bee bomb. Restless Sagittarius, you will escape possessive partners when you prize the green meadow room. Obsessed involvements will not hold you, Capricorn, when you treasure the purple cone flower. Bright white commas will lead you, Aquarius, out of melancholia. Spirited Pisces, your subtle urge toward lust will be encouraged by the brave yellow Julius. Have you been wronged? Were you innocent and yet your friends turned against you? These happy little weeds will help you. Tooth warts, adder's tongues, blood root and prickly poppies, stewed in a black iron pot for one hour over a low flame, will make a potion so strong it will see to it that your enemies lose their sexual capacities. Spellcasting is for the unafraid. There are all sorts of delightful ways you can go about casting spells and charming, and there's no need for you to stick to just one or two methods. You should try them all. Experiment. Don't dabble with enchantments, though, unless you are very brave. For once the magical vibrations are set into motion, they can never be recalled. The power of magic is such that though you may be able to alter a spell's conclusion, you can never ever recapture what existed for you at the start. For charmed loves, there's a charm that will have a catalytic effect on all your personal relationships. It will project romantic aura about you that love objects find exciting. It's the ancient Coleopterous charm. Since Cleopatra's time, the Coleopterous beetle has been the symbol of eternity. Occult beginnings. 
germination, is force, power, sex, birth, life and death. And above all, magic. Enchanters and sister coleopterous charm will invite a very satisfying sex life, increase sexual vitality, attract many healthy love relationships, encourage your lover's fidelity, prolong romantic desire, and protect the clandestine. Your lovemaking will reach fantastic heights of cosmic ecstasy. Your lover will become helpless within your passionate arms. You must agree that this charm is worthy of some effort. Cleopatra found the Coleopter's charm to be dependable. Greek witches of today say it's their favorite charm. And I know it works. Take one ironclad beetle, live, and wrap it into a small square of red silk. Place this small packet inside a tiny wooden box that has been painted bright red and is stuffed full with rosebuds. Seal the box with red sealing wax. Place the box and its contents into the northeast corner of your home. Light a purple tapered candle and chant three times. Coleopterous Magnificent. Coleopterous Blessed. Coleopterous Eternal. This charm's effect is good for about a year. Don't worry. It's not considered important if the beetle dies. An old Egyptian witch gave me an ancient love spell. A spell of tender love that takes a little time to prepare, but it's worth the effort. For once cast, it lasts forever. To cast this spell, you must make a special charm. You'll need a small white linen handkerchief, folded in half, once, twice, three times, now once again. Place a bean in the center of the folds, and with a silk purple thread, Carefully stitch the packet closed. Your stitches must be tiny, one touching the next. With every stitch, remember compassion. With every stitch, recall joy, emotion. Use 100 tiny stitches. When ready, place the charm in a wooden box. Fill the box and cover the charm with rosebuds, dry rosemary leaves, cloves, and thyme. Each night as the moon comes up, light a tall tapered rose-colored candle and gaze into its flame. One full minute. Offer this flame and dedicate this spell as a comfort for lost souls. Do this for eleven days. The charm will then be ready to carry close to your heart. Bury the candle in a garden by the light of a full moon. Then take the rosebuds. Rosemary, cloves and thyme, and throw them into the wind. Seduce your lover with a special charm from Sicily. It's a primitive charm of blood. Sicilian members of the Black Hand cult believe that a few drops of your own blood mixed with that of your lover's food or drink will bind the two of you through eternity. So potent is the known effect that it's not considered necessary for your lover to know the spell is being cast. Beware. Unless there is true love, it can be devastating to capture your lover in this way. Turkish enchanters use the sexual seduction spell because it generates wild, exciting pulsations that create delightful physical involvements without the weight of obsessed emotional madness. 
This one's my favorite. You will need salt, coarse. Sprinkle it in a circle about you. Remain within its protection for the entire length of the ritual. Light one large red candle on parchment. Write the name and birth date of the love object. Now to be sure that you'll be the one who holds the balance of power. Write your name and birth date on top of theirs. The spell will work after you have performed the ritual for nine consecutive days. Place the parchment into the candle flame. And as it slowly burns, chant three times the incantation. Light the flame. Bright the fire. Red is the color of desire. Light the flame. Bright the fire. Red is the color of desire. Light the flame. Bright the fire. Red is the color of desire. Bulgarian witches say that if you're looking for greater sexual opportunities, with pure silver three times tap crystal, and nine times ring a small Slavonian terracotta bell. But Finnish fascinators claim that if your home has candles burning brightly, you'll be visited by Mary Wood Nymphs nightly. Chinese spellcasters have a fantastic formula for an unusual form of lovemaking. They have a spell that will enable you to travel through dream dimensions without leaving your bed. You will be able to project yourself completely and make love realistically with a lover who may be a great distance from you. With this draw and sleep ritual, consider the variety of adventures possible. To begin, Draw a white chalk protective circle around your bed. Place a live turtle under the foot of your bed and three fresh mint leaves in your pillowcase. Before retiring, light three blue candles and let them flame for one hour. When you blow out the candles, ring a bronze bell once and then nine times whisper, Orpheus, Orpheus. 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 If your partner is sexy enough, but projects little warmth. Warmth is what you desire. Then you could use the emotional bondage spell. Are you and your lover sexually compatible? If not, it would be ridiculous for you to consider becoming emotionally chained. The bondage spell is dangerous. And many times the conjurer too gets conjured. It's fairly simple. You take a photograph, a bit of hair, or some intimate items belonging to the love object, such as a shirt or undergarments. You place them in the center of a table. Three candles, one yellow, one orange, and one red, should surround the treasures. Burn incense, your favorite. Light the candles and for nine full minutes gaze at the symbolic representation of your lover. Ring a clear silver bell three times and cover the intimate area with 47 yellow blossoms. Chant 47 times. We are one. 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 We are one.
know Kami is the magnificent god of emotional earthquakes. He strikes with passion, always swift, never just. He is the ultimate in fury. Nino Kami governs the ends of all things. There will be many lovers drawn toward your aura of sexual magnetism. Your magic will captivate them, sometimes even beyond your desires. If the time of ending is to come, only Nino Kami can help you dissipate the energies you have generated. And only Nino Kami can set you free. To be rid of a lover, every day at three for nine days, you'll mail the lover one of nine magical packets. Each separate tiny enchanted packet must contain ashes from the emotional earthquake spell. Along with three whole cloves, one soft gray feather, sand, and wax from the candle used in the spell. You send each packet inside a gray envelope sealed with red wax. The separating influence of the spell will last forever. The break is painful and very sad. You begin on the third Tuesday at nine. You enter a quiet area. Light one very large and very black candle. On a parchment, draw the number 22, along with the symbols for the sun, the moon, and all the planets. Stain the parchment with eight seeds from a ripe pomegranate and burn the paper in the flame of the candle. Now touch a bit of the ashes to your forehead. Three times. Gaze into the flame for three full minutes, and three times ring an iron bell, then call out softly. Nino Kami. The enchanters are all around you. Throughout your life, you meet hundreds of them. The high school principal, a bus driver, the druggist, an insurance salesman, the local mayor. All of them could be charmers. Have you ever been driven mad by someone you knew just couldn't be your type? Longed for them every moment? responded to their every desire. And then, when they decided, it all stopped. Cold. Over. Finny. And now, sometimes, you forget the name. And sometimes you can't seem to recall the face. Who was it? How do you know if a lover uses magic? Catherine de' Medici, Henry III, Pope Leo the Great, Queen Elizabeth of England, and James VI of Scotland were all suspected to be active in the art. The shape of witchcraft has been varied. As varied as the imagination and design of the personality involved dared. In fantasy, there's Snow White's beautiful but wicked queen stepmother with her poison apple. In reality, Joan of Arc. Her dedication to a cause, ambitious drive, thirst for adventure, and celestial voices. They had little in common. And the two would never have felt to rapport with the mythical Medea, who when scorned by Jason, gifted his younger love with a gown made of magical cloth that burned like fire. But how little remains to bind these women? It isn't too difficult to see the spirit decor that motivated them. But how can you tell who the enchanters are? And here's one way. Witches and wizards have a spontaneous interest in sexual situations. They're sensual and use it in their lust for power. And though not all the enchanters are promiscuous, all are successful with emotional seductions, and all make exciting lovers. If their 
there's a strange light in the eyes, a subtle fragrance about the hair, and a warm vibration to the touch. You can be sure you've met a spellcaster.